Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Ms. Feliz, uh, and I'm a first grade teacher at JFK Elementary. I'm so glad that you guys are here today, um, excited and ready to learn. So as you guys know, last week I posted a video um, on week two, on, some, on things covered in week two. And this week we're gonna be learning about week three, things that are being covered in week three's packet, okay? So, without further ado, let's get started. I'm so thankful that you guys are here today. Uh, I know the last one was pretty long, so I'm gonna try not to talk as much and try to go a little bit faster so that it's not so long for you guys, okay? So I thank you so much for being here and let's get started. Okay, so first we're gonna get started with reading. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. I figured out a way now which I can write on the screen, which I'm so excited to show you guys. Um, I was messing with it the other day and I figured it out. So I'm so excited about that. And it's still on my iPad. Okay. So there you go, you guys see my iPad, right? Okay, awesome. Oh, now it's done. <laughs> okay, so this one was assigned to you. This one was actually assigned to you uh, for this week. Um, a lot of you guys have turned it in, which I'm very, very happy and very glad. But at the same, at the same time, guys, um, I did ex ex expect uh, complete sentences when answering. And we do this in the class a lot of times when we're doing math problems, when we're solving them. You know, I always ask you guys, uh, you know, writing, we're writing in complete sentences. Remember, remember the soup keeper, remember the details, all of that stuff. You know, at the same time, um, I know that we're not in the classroom together and maybe you just want to get over with the work because you don't want to do the work. You know, I know it's hard, but at the same time, you know, we have to keep going. We can't stop and we can't be like, oh, well, I'm done. I'm just, I'm going to finish this so I can go back to play. You're going to have your playing time and you have a lot of free time in your hands. If you get your work done super quickly, you have the rest of the day to, to um, play. So, you know, one thing that I was a little disappointed on was the fact that a lot of you guys did not answer in complete sentences. And that is not good. You need to be able to answer in complete sentences because when you go to second grade, your second grade teachers are going to expect for you to be able to write a complete sentence with a capital letter in the beginning, um, you know, and the right punctuation at the end. So I need you, need you, need you for here on out, whenever I send you things like this where you need to answer in complete sentences, I need you, need you, need you to write in complete sentences, not just uh, whatever, you know, no. Okay, so let's go over this one. Um, it says, read comprehension, read the, read the passage three times and then answer the questions. You know, it's a very, very short passage. It says, Carmen is going to a snow trip with her school. She is bringing her yellow scarf to keep her warm. Carmen is excited to build a snowman with her friends. She also wants to learn how to ski, but she's worried that it is going to be too hard. Mm, let's see. So we know that the, the main characters here is Carmen. And we know that she's going on a, school tr on a snow trip with her school, okay? That's the main topic of this whole little passage, of this little passage, okay? We, it says there, read it how many times, class? Because, you know, if you read it one time, are you gonna get all the details? No, it says read three times. Go back with red. Carmen is going to a snow trip with her school. She is bringing her yellow scarf to keep her warm. Carmen is excited to build a snowman with her friends. She also wants to learn how to ski, but she is worried she's going it, she's worried it's going to it is going to be too hard one more time carmen is going on a snow trip with her school she is bringing her yellow scarf to keep her warm carmen is excited to build a snowman with her friends she also wants to learn how to ski but she is worried that it is going to be too hard ooh okay so let's see question number 1 it says who is taking carmen on a snow trip who who is taking Carmen on her snow trip? Um, well, we circle, we underlined that in the first sentence right here where it says, Carmen is going on a snow trip with her school. So we would answer in a complete sentence, 
Carmen will be going with her school. That's an acceptable answer. If you just wrote school, school is a sentence. I don't know, you guys tell me, is school a sentence? No, a sentence needs to tell me who, what, it needs to have things there. You can't just, it can't be just be like school. That doesn't tell me. Like if I were just to read the answer, I don't know, just school. Make sure that you're writing complete sentences and you tell me who. Carmen will be going with her school. Who is taking Carmen on a snow trip? Carmen will be, will be going on her school, with her school. Or it could be her school is taking her. Her school is taking her on the snow trip. That would be another answer, okay? Remember, complete sentences. Next question. What is Carmen bringing? Okay. Uh, oh, I see right here it says bringing. She is bringing her yellow scarf to keep her warm. So you can even actually even write that whole sentence there. She is bringing her yellow scarf to keep her warm. So let's write that. She is bringing her yellow scarf. Or that. You can write she's bringing her yellow scarf. But let me try to fit. Is because <laughs> I, I can't fit the rest, but. I mean, in your case, you can write smaller. It's a little bit hard for me to, because I'm actually writing with it on the iPad, so it's a little bit hard. But you, if you have a pencil, if you're writing, if you're doing your work on paper and pencil, make sure that you write small and you're able to fit everything, okay? To keep her warm. Or you can write it right here on the bottom. Okay, make sure that you put your period at, at, at the end, okay? Who is Carmen going to build a snowman with? Carmen, let's see, in the story it says she's bringing her yellow scarf to keep her warm. Carmen is excited to build a snowman with her friends. So who is Carmen going to build a snowman with? Carmen is going to build a snowman with her friends. Okay, make sure that you, again, guys, it is important that you guys write in complete sentences. Don't, if it doesn't fit, do what Ms. Belize is doing. Do what she's doing. She's writing underneath it. And, and I know it looks a little crowded, but hey, you're giving me what I want, which is a complete sentence, right? Now, if you don't know how to miss, you tell me, Ms. Belize, I don't know how to write all of that. Or Ms. Belize, um, you know, I, I don't know how to, how to do this or I don't know how to do that. You know, you can share your ideas with your voice. Say, you're, let's say you're working with it with your mommy and, and, you, and your mommy asks you, who is, who is Carmen going to build a snowman with? And you tell her mommy, well, Carmen is going to build a snowman with her friends. Okay, well then let your parent write it on a separate sheet of paper and then you can copy it on there. There's no ex no excuse guys why we're not writing in complete sentences. There's no excuse. I've seen you guys write multiple stories. All those stories that I, I would get from my from my box, you guys would write complete sentences. So you didn't just write uh it if, if it asked you what is your favorite sport, you didn't write just basketball. You told me I wanted to know why. What else? What you know, you can't just write basketball, you know? That doesn't give me anything. It just tells me that you like basketball, but you don't tell me why. You don't tell me what's your favorite thing about it, you know? And that's the same thing when you answer questions. When you answer questions, you need to give details. Details need to be there. The zookeeper is there, remember. And the, zoo, the zookeeper isn't just gonna have one animal in his zoo. He needs to have more animals. It can't just be one, then people are not gonna go and visit the zookeeper, right? I need you to keep that story in mind when you're doing all these stuff, like transfer it into, into this answering questions, because that's very, that's going to be very important when you get into the upper grades, when you get like your big brothers or sister, if you have any, 
um, you're going to be taking a, a, an important test and they're going to want you to write in detail. They're not going to write, they're not going to just want the answer. They're not going to want that. They're going to want you to write the, the answer plus details. Okay. The next question, number four, it says, what does Carmen want to learn from her snow trip? Oh, well, we, we, we keep going where we left off. It says she also wants to learn how to ski. Okay, so what does Carmen want to learn in her snow trip? Carmen wants to learn how to ski, period. Okay, what is Carmen worried about? And we keep going. She is worried that it is going to be too hard, okay? <clears throat> What is Carmen worried about? Carmen is worried that skiing will be too hard. Okay, again, if you get out of the place, if you get out of the line, that's okay, guys, as long as you give me what I want, which is that complete sentence, okay? So that was it for this one. Again, if I, assign, if I assign you things in future packets that are looked like this, okay? Someone like, I'm not saying it's gonna be, they're not gonna give you obviously the same story, but if it looks something like this, make sure that you answer in complete sentences. When it's math even, also, you know, I, I uh, I'll look over the math right now and I'm gonna show you where I, I meant also that I wanted complete sentences, okay? The next one we're gonna cover is contractions. I know we, we did cover a little bit of this in, in class. Um, we talked about how contractions are two words. Remember, there's two words and they're put together, but they're gonna have a little apostrophe on the top, okay? So the apostrophes are these, remember the ones that are like just on the top floating and they, and they substitute a letter. For the most part, like for example, in this one, uh, let me erase that. Uh, okay. The first one, it says do not, do not. So we have two words, right? Do not, we put them together and it gives us do, and then the apostrophe is going to go on the O, right? So the O disappears and he goes into the little apostrophe. So that would give us don't, and don't is right here, okay? The same thing with we are. Again, that's two words. We are. We put them together, and it gives us we're. So which letter left? The A, right? Here the O left and it turned into apostrophe. You know what, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it on this side and this is where you guys could check your answer. Over here, I am. So again, I am, put them together. We will take away the A, we put on apost apostrophe and it gives us I'm, okay? The next one, did not. Again, two words, did not. Remember, for the most part, when you have the word not on any of the, of, the, of the examples or the problems, every time you have the word not, usually the O is the one that gets, that gets cut out, okay? For example, we're in like did not, didn't, right? Are not, you would take away the O. The O is the one that leaves. For the most part, the O is the one that leaves, okay? aren't aren't those aren't my favorite shoes let's let's go on the ones that let's go over the ones that have not is not it will be isn't okay again the o leaves and it turns into apostrophe uh cannot you take away the o you put an apostrophe can't right so every time you see the word not not, not, not. The O is the one that leaves and goes into the apostrophe, it turns into apostrophe. So will 
will will not oh this one oh except for this one <laughs> i was gonna do the same thing here but no will not is the only exception here you see that's why i said sometimes this one we're turning to won't won't which is right here okay again there's exceptions to it but for the most part the majority not all of them the majority um the ones that have the not will the o will disappear into the little apostrophe okay and does not does it okay this is this one to the o one and to the apostrophe okay now for the rest i have this one here's where it gets a little bit crazy because this one we actually take off two letters i have is i've 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 gone to the store i've gone to six flags i have gone to six flags it's a shorter way to say it okay we take away the h and the a we put an apostrophe and we say i've which is right here now is it is so again it is it will be it's it's what letter will be eliminated here the i right it will go into the apostrophe it's now who is it will be whose the i gets eliminated okay and it will go into the apostrophe whose whose shoes are that okay the next one she will shield oh i put extra she'll she'll want a hamburger or she she'll want uh some pizza with no pepperoni okay so here we will eliminate these two we will put an apostrophe they are this one is there you will take away the a you put the apostrophe okay and this little uh bank here on the bottom helps you a lot okay if you see okay for example this one you see the word they uh you can look in here up oh, they they are they are okay that's another way to work make sure that you take advantage of the things that are on your paper okay take advantage of all the little uh clues or or um, um things that help you out okay take advantage of that don't just try to figure it out on your own you know try to use what's there for you to help you out that's why it's there okay now let's go i just want to go over that and again remember you have two words contractions are two words that are jointed together and they have an apostrophe okay that's important to note guys um and obviously there's a lot of other examples that have this okay let's see let me stop the share let's go back over here okay so i wanted to uh, also read to you guys a story i'm going to try this out uh i have not tried this out with you guys yet but i wanted to read you a short uh, a story that was in our hmh book which is the book that the last one we had had a cactus on it i forgot the one that we have now but it's there we were supposed to read it i believe last week and this book is actually a ar book it's ar testable so i expect for everyone to try their best to try to test this book since i'm already reading it to you guys okay um this is a level 2.5 and if of course there's any problems just let me know and i'll take care of it okay so let's uh try to go into um the website let's see if it works i'm gonna cross my fingers because again this is a little bit difficult but we're gonna get it to work okay so let's see I think it showed it to you. Let me try one more time. There you go. Okay. So this story is called The Talking Vegetables. Okay. So we have a little basis on them. So we know that they're going to talk. There's a creepy spider too. I don't like spiders. It says, bam, bam, bam. 
Who's pounding on my door so early in the morning? Spider shouted. Your neighbor, your neighbors, it's time to clear the land for our village farm. Go away, said Spire, Spider. I'm tired. But we need you, they said. If everyone helps, there will be plenty of vegetables for all of us. Spider yawned. I don't need your vegetables. I have plenty of rice. Oh, so what happened? The spider didn't want to help the other animals, right? And they're trying to, to get food. Mm, let's see what happens next. Everyone in the village walked down the road to a clearing in the forest, except everyone except, except spider. Mm -mm, that spider. They worked all day cutting down bushes, tearing out vines, and digging up roots. They raked smooth beds and built a waterway. We see a power word there, and it is the word smooth. So smooth is, it means that if it's something is smooth, it is flat and not bumpy. Okay, flat and not bumpy. Now let's see. The next morning, the villagers came again to Spider's door. Bam, bam, bam. Who's there, Spider called. Your neighbors, come help us plant the seeds. I said no, and I meant no, Spider, uh, shouted Spider. Now go away. Oh, that Spider, she does not, or he does not want to help the animals, right? The villagers carried seeds to the farm and planted them in straight rows. They planted cat cassava, tomato, squash, pumpkin, cabbage, cucumber, pepper, and many different kinds of beans and greens. So there we see the monkey, the chicken, the butterfly, everybody, even a little worm over here, she did a helping over here. Let's see what happens next, guys. A month later, the villagers knocked on the spider's door again. Bam, bam, bam. Spider opened his door and yelled, what do you want now? It's time to leave the farm, they answered. I didn't help before and I'm not helping now, Spider screamed. He slammed the door and went back to bed. Oh, that spider is being very lazy because everybody else is trying to work except him, right? And this reminds me of a story that we read and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you at the end when, we, when we're done reading, okay? All day, the villagers pulled weeds. Their knees hurt, their backs ached, and their arms were, were sore. In time, the vegetables began to ripen. The villagers picked up what they wanted. Ripen means that they started to get good, like they started to get ready for them to cut them out. Okay, so that's why they started picking them. One day, Spider said to himself, I'm getting tired of rice. Plain rice day after day after day. I live here. I'm part of this village too. I'm going to pick myself some vegetables to go with my rice. And right here we see a contraction, right? I'm, I am, I am part of this village too. I am going to pick myself some vegetables. You see, but they... They joined the word I and am together to make I, right? Let me read my little screen this way. I can see myself. <laughs> that one. When, Spider got the, when Spider got to the farm, he couldn't believe his eyes. Huge cucumbers laid on the ground. Giant pumpkins rested under the leaves, under green leaves. Juicy tomatoes hung from vines. Oh, Lord, they had a lot of stuff there. Do you think they're all going to want to give him stuff? We see the little warmy over here. Let's see what happens. It says, wow, said Spider. Those tomatoes look delicious. I'll just take one or maybe two. Spider reached out to pick a tomato from the nearest plant. The tomato shook itself and said, what are you doing? Spider said, what? 
a talking tomato? Oh my gosh. The tomato said, why do you think you can pick me when you didn't come to clear the land to, you didn't come to clear the land or plant my seeds or pull my weeds? Get out of here. Uh-oh. So are the tomatoes letting him get picked? No, they're telling him that he didn't help. So why, why is he doing that? Now we see another power word. Remember, we usually circle those when we're reading our, our stories, but today we can't do that. So it says here, delicious. What does delicious mean? Delicious means when something is delicious, it tastes very good. Yes, I agree with that. Chocolate is very delicious and it's actually my favorite. So I think it is delicious and it tastes very, very good. Okay, so let's see what else. The tomato didn't let him get picked. So let's see what else. Who else doesn't let themselves get picked? Spider backed away. He looked around and said, there are so many fat cucumbers on this vine. I'll just take one or maybe two. But as he walked toward the cucumber vine, it started moving away from him. Spider was surprised. He'd never seen a moving vine before. It twisted all over the ground. You can't pick us, said the cucumber. You didn't clean, clear the land. You didn't plant the seed. You didn't plant our seeds. You can't, you didn't pull the weeds. Sorry. So, Again, the cucumbers didn't let spider get picked. But let's notice something in the in the pictures. We have a crop here. In the last picture where the tomatoes, we have a little worm, right? And now we have a little monkey here. So this is just an inference. It's just an idea. Do you guys think that maybe they have to do something with the uh, vegetable stocking? What do you think? Let's see, let's continue reading to see if that's true, if our inference is, is, is correct. It says, Spider ran to the other side of the farm. Ahead, he saw a perfect pumpkin, big enough. Not too big, but not too big. I'll just grab that pumpkin on my way out, he said, but he couldn't lift it. The pumpkin stuck to the ground. He tugged and pulled, but the pumpkin wouldn't move. You can't take me, the pumpkin said. You didn't help to make the farm. Go away. Uh-oh. And look who we see here. So the pumpkin, not budgie. We already had a lot of vegetables tell him that he can't take them, right? Spider tried to find his way out of the farm, but the vegetables reached up to grab him. Leaves covered his eyes. Them stretched out to trip him. What does it mean by stretched? Stretched. If something stretched, it is because it's full size or it's gotten longer or wider. I stretched my arm up so I couldn't reach, so I could reach the box. So stretch, like, it'd be cool like that. You guys know what stretching is. Remember we would stretch uh, after lunch a little bit or when we would have brain break? Okay, let's continue. Spider finally got free. He ran all the way back to the village. When he got home, he was tired and hungry. He put a pot of water over the fire and boiled some rice. So he just went home because he was already tired. And he didn't, he didn't even go home with any of the vegetables, right? Everybody else, look. They all have a vegetable to eat. Let's see. That night, he ate rice for dinner. Plain rice. The end. So, let's see. That was a crazy story. But we can, we can um, compare this story to kind of like the grasshopper and the ants. Remember that the grasshopper, the grasshopper didn't want to help the ants because uh, he was having fun, right? And playing his music and all of that. And, and the ants told him, hey, you need to get to work. And the grasshopper was like, nope, nope, nope. And then when it came time to winter, what happened? He didn't have any food, right? So this is kind of similar. But at the end, the spider just got his rice. That's all he had, right? That's all he got. They, they didn't give him any. They didn't share with him, right? So again, this teaches us a lesson that 
you know, we need to put in work also. And this, this can apply to us. We need to put in work so where we can have some fruit at the end, right? We can't just be like, oh, you know, I'm not going to work. 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 And then other, other people are working. And let, let me put it to you in comparison to, to learning and, and how we are right now away from each other, right? So all of you guys, um, we are in this together, right? We're all trying to grow. We're all trying to keep on learning, even though we're not in the classroom and even though it's not the same as being in the classroom, right? But we're trying to keep going either way, right? A lot of you, some of you, let me point out one person who always does it, Mr. Nathan um, goes above and beyond, right? He's doing his work. He's doing Waterford. He's doing AR. You know, he's just doing it. You know, he's doing it all. So he's getting above. When he goes into second grade, he's going to be fine. But there's some of you who are not doing nothing and you don't want to do work. So then Mr. Nathan is going to get the crops right at the end, like the, like the other animals did, like the ants did in that story in the grasshopper and the ants. And what about, and do you want to be a grasshopper? Do you want to be a spider? No, right? We all want to get fruit. So we all have to put a little bit of work in it. We have to, you know, keep going so that at the end, we can get our product, right? Which is learning more in this case, right? In our real life to life uh, example that I gave. Okay. So that's with that. I, um, if you want to go over back and, and uh, you know, maybe take off the audio and let your mommy read the story for you. Or if you want to read the story with you without Ms. Belisa's voice, you can do that. Um, but make sure that you uh, listen to it, that you read over it uh, while Ms. Belisa is reading it so that uh, you can air test it. I expect to see that book air test. I'm looking at all of you guys' reports and you guys already know this. I look at your reports every, every Friday um, and make sure that you guys are doing your AR, okay? So uh, I'm gonna be checking that to see who tests that book, okay? I don't know if your mommies and your daddy, if your mommies told you um, but, um, I'm still keeping our, our little superstar wall. Like, you know how we had the little table for the air books and the little dots for Waterford. I'm still doing that. I'm still checking who's a superstar. And this past week, I only had one person that was Nathan. That's why I brought him up in, as an example, because Nathan did all of that. And I'm expecting that all of you guys do that. I'm trying to motivate you to, to want to do that, to be a superstar. Nathan got a phone call, you know, from me, um, last week and I was so excited to see him and I want to see you guys too so please read um that's my motivation to you to try to get you motivated so that I can see you and I mean I hope that you guys want to see me too right okay so let's move on right to the next one because I said I wasn't gonna do it long but I keep on talking right uh we're gonna keep going and we're gonna do math now so let me get my stuff ready and I'll be back okay Okay, so now we're back and we're doing math. I know it was like, a, it wasn't even a break for you guys, but for me it was because I was away from my computer. But let's go back to, uh, let's go back to starting off with math now. Uh, I'm going to again share my screen with you guys. Um, let's see. There we go. You guys should see it. Okay. So you guys got, I believe, this one for homework. As and this is these these are for grades, guys. These are for a grade. It says here. Uh, subtraction with word problems. Draw a picture and help you solve the subtraction word problems. A lot of you guys, I I love Delaney's work. Uh, and uh, I'm sending her a high five from here. She did an amazing job. A lot of you guys did, did good on this one. But again, on the answer, where it says answer it, I wanted somehow, some way to you, for you to fit a complete sentence in there. Okay? I'm just going to do one problem with you. Um, number one, it says read it. The farmer had six cows, but then three ran away. How many cows does a farmer have left? So um, Ms. Vides is just going to do little circles one two three four five six right she had they they have the farmer had six cows but then three ran away so i take away three of them right because they they went away so how many did i have left how many of the cows did the farmer have left the farmer had three cows right three cows left 
and our equation will be six cows minus three cows equals three cows, right? So over here, I would put, let me erase this little part here so that I can write. I would put the farmer had three cows left, okay? And I would be on, and it fits there, you see? I mean, there's no excuse, guys. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted, that it, it's a complete sentence. And again, Ms. Valise, well, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to write it down. You know, give the answer verbally, like talk and tell it to your parents. Mommy, uh, the answer is that the farmer had three cows left. Can you help me write it? Okay, then your mommy can write it for you on a piece of paper and you can write it on your uh, work, on your actual paper, okay? So there's that. Um, this one too, you guys had it. We went over fractions last week. If you need help, you could have gone back to that video and seen it. Um, for the most part, a lot of you guys did good, so I'm very proud of you. Um, but today I wanna go over hmm, this one, addition and subtraction challenge. I'm just gonna go over the first row. Um, the first, well, I'll do the first row for math. I mean, the first row for addition and the first row for subtraction, which are gonna be this one and this one. Okay, I won't go over all of them. But here, what I want you to do here, we're gonna make a line here down the middle in the top, and I'm gonna put ones and tens. Okay. These are the one these are in the ones place on the right are the ones place. Mm, maybe more well, if I change colors gonna do things. Uh these are gonna be in the ones place and these are in the tens place, right? So how you add these when they're stacked, you just add down. So by what I mean that you add down from here, don't look at this, ignore, ignore this for now. Focus on this side over here, on the one side. On the one um, side, it has six and it has a zero. And we're what? Adding, so six plus zero, you have six and you add zero, it's six, right? So you write the six there. Now over here, now ignore the ones. You will ignore the ones place and you will look at the tens. You have one plus one plus one is what? So you have one and you add another one. So we have two, right? So if, if the problem is 16 plus 10, the answer is 26, okay? Again, all you did was add it the ones place. You you didn't focus on the tens, so don't look at the tens place. You're looking at the ones only. Six plus zero is six, and you bring it down. Now the tens place. One plus one is two, and you bring it down. And your answer as a total or as a whole is 26. You see that? Again, you would do the same thing on the second side over here. You do ones and a tens. To again concentrate only on the ones place first. You always, always, always at the ones place first. Do not, and I mean do not come over here to the tens place and do four plus one is five. Okay, do not do that. Do not start there because once you get into the upper grades, once you go into second grade to third grade, you're gonna be taught new, new, um, a new uh, skill that's called regrouping. And you can't start in the tens if you're going to regroup, okay? And later on, obviously, your second grade teacher will let you know what regrouping means. But I'm just saying, do not, and I mean do not start on the tens place, okay? Do not. Start on the ones, always. Always start in the ones. So 2 plus 0 is 2. 4 plus 1 is 5. It's 52, okay? Next one. Ones, tens going down only on the ones, five plus zero is five. Only on the tenths, five plus one is six. Okay, simple. Again, step by step, you, you, you do a tens and a ones, right? Tens and ones side. You start with the ones, eight, 
And you need to look at this sign here because right now we're going to do the, the minus, right? 8 plus 0 is 8. Now 2 plus 1 is 3, right? That's only the tens place. And last one for addition. 1's tens, you're going to add the 1's first. 9 plus 0. Super easy peasy, that's 9. Now the tens place. 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay, that's all you need to do there. In the bottom, we're going to divide it up again. The same thing, you'll start the same ones, tens and ones. But now we're doing subtraction, right? 2 minus 0 is 2. 3 minus 1, so you have 3, you take away 1, you have 2 left, right? So the answer here is 22. Now here, again, tens and ones, you start with the ones first. 8 minus 0 is 8, and 5 minus 1, you have 5, you take away 1, it's 4, All right? Same thing, 10 1s, 5 minus 0, it's 5, and then 5 take away 1, it's 4, right? 45, 10 1s, 1 minus 0 is 1, and 7 minus 1, 7 take away 1 is 6. Right, you should know uh, these. You know, we, we were practicing in the morning um, how to subtract, but we would only do one digit, right? Now, six minus zero, six minus zero is six, and then nine minus one is eight, and that's it, guys. You would do the same thing for all of them. I again, you do the tens and the ones, you start off with the ones place first. And it depends. If it says addition, you add the ones. If it says subtraction, you subtract the ones, okay? Now, one more thing that I was seeing on here was, uh, was these. Let me get my paper so that I can go into my notes and I can show you because these questions were coming up, were coming up a lot. Let me get my... Uh, my notes right here. Um, this is a cool thing that I can show you my notes. <laughs> so, I know that you can't see it. And you can't see the page, right? But you had something like this. Um, you had a scale the, on number one. This is, um, well, on the top it has a, it has a four and an eight. Sorry, there's a four and an eight on the top. And then it says number one. It has a, like a box like that. It has a scale, this is called a scale. And it's balanced and over here it has, and then it has like this. And then on this side, it has like that, right? That's kind of like how it looks. And it says, which Kate puts blocks on a balance scale. So this is the balance scale. Which best shows Kate's balance, balance scale? So which equation represents? An equation, um, we know what an equation is, like five plus zero is five, right? It's kind of like that. But here we're trying, we're trying to do this, okay? So the answer choices, we have eight, we have eight. We have a six minus six equals zero. We have b six plus zero equals six, and we have c six equals six. First, let's count the number of blocks we have, right? So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six blocks here, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six blocks here which means that this, when we have six and six on each side, the, does the sign go, the comparison, comparison side, does it go like, oh, I can't put it here. Let me do an arrow and put it on this side. Does it go like this, like this, or like this? If they're both the same number, it means that they're equal, right? So you put equal here. 
Now let's look at letter A. You probably already saw the answers, right? The answer, which one's the answer? Letter A. It has six minus six is zero. Does, is there zero represented on the balance? Do we have zero represented on the balance? No, right? We don't have zero represented on the balance. We have a six and we have another six. We don't have, which we have here, but is it subtracted? No. What did we say that it was? It was equal to. So it's not A. Now B, six plus zero equals six. Uh, again, where does this zero come from? Six plus zero is equal six? No, that's wrong. And then we have C, six equals six. Do we have this on the top right here? Yes, so what will be your answer? C, right? Let me try to go back to that screen. This is not, this one's the page I was talking about right here. You see she has one, two, three, four, five, six. She has one, two, three, four, four, five, six here, which is equal like we had said. And then these are the answer choices. Remember this is A, B, and C. Which one shows this? Let's see. Okay. Now let's try another example. Let's try another example. Another example that you have here. It says number two, let's just do number two. It says circle the equation, the equation that is true. So you have seven plus two equals eight plus one. You have five equals six plus one. And you have four plus five equals 12 minus three. Okay, so we have to circle the one that's correct. So what I would do here, you have, you have the equal sign here, right? So you will have to solve this side and then this side, and it's gonna give you a number. So seven plus two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two. You add them, seven, eight, nine. This is nine, and then here, eight. You add one more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus one more, plus one is nine. So this equation is nine equals nine. Is that true? Does nine equal nine? Yes, that's true, right? Now let's do it over here. Five equals six plus one. Six plus one, one, two, three, four, five, six plus one, that equals seven. And this one, well, five is already there, right? So does five equal seven? Is that the same number? Does it equal? No, that is incorrect. It does not equal, right? Now here we have four plus five, one, two, three, four, plus one, two, three, four, five. Four plus five is what? Is nine equals 12 minus three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then we're gonna take away three. So one, two, three, how many do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, nine equals nine. Is that true? Is that a true equation? Yeah, it is. A true equation means that it's equal, that it is correct. You know, if this one isn't, is, this one is not a true equation because you have a five and a seven and a five is not equal to a seven, right? So we had two answers that were correct and they both gave us nine equals nine. And that was answer choice A and answer choice, I know not B. <laughs> I'm gonna put B, but it's not B. And answer, answer choice um, C, right? So let's go back to our thing here. We said this one was equal because this one equals nine plus nine, not nine plus nine. This one equals nine equals nine. This one was incorrect because this one was five equals seven. And this one was correct because it was nine equals nine. So this one was also one of the choices. Okay, so to make it a true equation, that means that they need to have both numbers at this, uh, uh, both numbers on each side need to represent the same amount and they need to be equal. When it is an example like this one, where it's five equals seven, that means that it's not correct, that the answer, that the equation is not true because five is not 
does not equal seven, okay? And you have a lot of those here. If you guys need any help, uh, if you guys need any help, uh, what's it called, with any of the work, please let me know, you know, uh, let your parents uh, text me, call me, or be on remind. You know, I'm here for your help. I'm here to help you out. You know, obviously I go back again as my, I'm, I'm done already. That's all I wanted to show you. But again, I miss you guys so, so, so much. You guys don't know how much I miss you guys and how much you guys made a difference. Just having you every day, you know, in my life, you guys made a big difference. Um, I don't want you to get discouraged that, oh, well, I'm not in Ms. Villis' classroom. I'm not going to do the work. Mom, you're not going to make me do the work. Please don't be like that, guys. Please try your best to um, keep on working hard, you know, keep on uh, wanting to learn and trying your best. If you give me your best, I'm happy with that. If you give me your all, I'm happy. There's nothing that I can't, I'm not going to get mad at you, you know, for not, for giving me your all. I am extremely proud of every single one of you. And, you know, I know that I have faith that we're going to see each other soon. Um, parents, I thank you for putting on this video again for your child. Again, I'm trying my best to, you know, do my best for your children so that they can still have um, that educational experience, even though we're away from the classroom, okay? Just want to remind you really quick, please keep on reading, keep on AR testing, you know, one book a day, two, you know, I my goal was six books. Um, it was one book every day um, and an extra book. Uh, whenever they can, whenever it was possible, whenever they had a chance, right? But please, 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 parents, I, I, I want for you then to read at least one book. If you have any questions with AR, let me know. If you have any questions with Waterford, uh, let me know as well. I've had some parents reach out to me, and I thank you. I thank you for doing that. Um, you know, you asked me to explain myself further, and I did, and you know, it worked out for you, and I'm thankful for that. I'm finding ways in helping your child, and I just hope that, um, you know, we can work together as a team so that we can get this done. You know, this is a new experience for all of us, but, you know, God willing, we're going to get through this, and this is a new experience um, that we can take on, and we can uh, learn from it, you know, especially learn and grow from it. So I just want to thank you guys. Um, again, see you later um, next week. I'll be posting another video and I thank you for your time and have a great day.